you just made the most perfect segue of all time into the next topic, which I'd like to touch on is more sort of the ethics in machine learning and AI. I think one of the ethical points that uh, my good friend, um, Noveta Sampson, who's like big into the AI ethics space, talks about is um, that every data point usually is a person. It is someone. It is not just uh, not not just something that helps us to build models. There's also an end user that's always impacted by, or usually impacted by the the, the decisions that that our models produce. And I'm interested in your perspective on the state of AI ethics. You know especially with new advancements in ChatGPT, I'm interested in, are we even going to be able to keep up and regulate these types of things? Um, and also more broadly in the community, uh, you've mentioned offline that it seems like there's a bit of an echo chamber, right? There's a lot mm -hmm. of conversation that, that is circular and it doesn't always necessarily lead places. So I realize I left you with like seven questions there, um, but I, I trust in your ability to, to sort through those. Okay, yeah. Like AI ethics, yeah, there's an echo chamber problem within certain like groups within the AI ethics space because there's there are the AI ethicists and they, uh, they argue um, you know, amongst themselves often what is the, the best route for AI to be used safely and fairly? And, and that those are valid questions, but they're, they're not reaching a, a larger audience, right? Maybe they're, they're, they're getting, they're seeping in into the public conscious through books that discuss this in a more like very dystopian tone or, you know, um, yeah. Or in, in movies, like the, the, the ones we've seen, like, uh, about bias, I, I keep forgetting the name of the the movie, but uh, coded bias. Um, so so people are, are 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 consuming this content and they 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 have a dystopian view, which is not a, not a completely lack of merit, but I I think there is the other side to it, which is what are we going to do about it, right? How how do we participate? And it's not a, not just a question of saying okay because uh, taking up uh, a position of stop AI, you know, let's, let's stop this madness, but it's, it's more like, how do I participate? And I think te all technology that manages to be widely adopted goes through a phase like this. Uh, and as, especially one that has uh, the potential to change hum humanity in some way or shape or form. There, there were people at some point claiming uh, no more cars, they're they're awful, right? And we they work for every horses? technology we can think of. So, and we can't imagine a world without the internet or without cars or without all these things, right? And we could say, oh, it's been a net benefit, all of it. Mm -hmm. But they all went through a point where they could have been uh, a net negative in some way, of shape, or form. And I think the the main reason it went from one way to an, one one camp to another was an involvement from everybody. There was like a, a diverse multidisciplinary discussion, you know, maybe not even intellectual on what this technology meant and how to make it work for everybody. And um, I think um, there was at some point with cars, people said, how do we make this more safe? And someone came up with the brilliant idea of, of putting up traffic signs and and later on other other ways of be, you know, making sure people are safe, like seatbelts and, and so forth. Things that we now take for granted. And we can do the same for AI. But I think it starts with everybody using it, everybody getting involved, even hobbyists starting to create their own experiments, their own work with AI. And I think that's how we get there. <laughs>